do you think should be done? <laughs> you really don't want my opinion on that. Okay. If they are treating this old pupil as human being, they never do anything. But we don't have shelter, we don't have anything. It used to be a fun job, there's no fun in it now whatsoever. Just coming into Dover. Sume is filming, and this is Ewan. Say hello, Ewan. Hi. Ewan's from Northern Ireland, County Down, and contacted the BBC because he's had problems with migrants getting on his truck, and it's going to show me what life's like for the next few days. So, what kind of problems have you had going through Calais before? Last week and the week before, I had problems with immigrants getting into the uh, truck. I was able to take some pictures of them. Well, what's your fear? Most of these guys are armed with a Stanley knife because they usually cut their way into the trailers. And we're supposed to get in to the trailer and get these guys out. I'm qualified as a truck driver, that's what I'm trained as. I'm not. I'm not qualified or trained as crowd control or riot police. What kind of fine are you looking at if someone gets in the back? I think the, the current figure is £2,000 a person per immigrant. At the port we meet some friends of Ewan, also drivers for more than 20 years, also tired of playing immigration officer. I had four Syrians in the back of a fridge about three months ago. When I got to Hilton Park in Birmingham, there was four of them banging luck at night. So we rang the police. The police come, two police cars, an ambulance, a doctor's car for immigrants. How has it changed your job? Big time. The hassle that you have in Cali is unreal. They're banging mirrors, baiting doors, trying to get in, into the trailers. You just can't, there's nothing you can do about it. The immigrants are just running wild. What do you think should be done? <laughs> you really don't want my opinion on that. It used to be a fun job, there's no fun in it now whatsoever. I had them in the back of the trailer going back um, January, eight of them. I got the police and the police came and they let them go and, and they run over the bushes. And it was just, the next lorry came in, they were going to do the same again. And they'll do the same again, and they'll do the same again. Anything to get across into England. Do you think if you were fleeing war, you would do anything to get to safety? You'd do anything to protect your family? Of course you would, yeah. That's what of they're doing? Of course you would, yeah, of course. But at other people's expense. I can understand maybe, in a sense, the countries they're coming from, but it's the taxpayers that are keeping them in this country. And there's enough poor people in this country between here and Northern Ireland. Do you have any sympathy with them? No, none. Not whenever you go through what we have to go through every week. Them days are gone. They carry knives. Huh? They carry, they carry knives. knives. We make a late night crossing to Calais from Dover. These truckers are angry. Tomorrow Ewan wants to show me why. So where are we going Ewan? We're going down in, this is the diesel alley where all the fuel stops are, um, where the slightly cheaper diesel would be, than, uh, it'd be cheaper than UK prices, and this is the dunes here where all of the immigrants are encamped. This is where they spend their day when they're not trying to break into trucks. Does it make you sad seeing this? 
yeah, I suppose it does. I mean, we had a pretty good breakfast this morning and those guys are standing there depending on charity to feed them. It's, it's sad in a way. These guys are waiting on the central reservation of the motorway here for trucks to slow down so as they can jump on. I mean, there's a lot of people. Has there always been this many people? No, no, it started off small numbers, but just over the years, and especially in this past year, past six months, the numbers um, of people have been increasing and increasing, and they say the aggressive behavior has been getting worse and worse. Um, there's a lot of confrontations now. We head into the port. As we queue, someone makes a run for the back of Ewan's lorry. He spots me filming. They're climbing the fence. Uh, the immigrants are coming over the fence here, just at the back of the truck. All clear. All looks okay? Yeah, I don't think we've got anybody in today. There's a huge sense of them and us here. The truckers versus the migrants. The two groups don't communicate. And so Ewan is even worried when I get out. So this is a makeshift camp where hundreds of asylum seekers and migrants are waiting to try and cross the channel. And these are the people that the truckers, the lorry drivers say, are making their job basically impossible. At the start of last year, there were around 200 people here. Now that's around 3,000. Almost everyone I meet is from Sudan or Eritrea in Africa. Where do you want to go? British, England. Why? Well, we know the language of these people. And uh, some days these people stay in our country. What do you want? I want home. Home and food and medicine. Something like this, you know. The truckers are scared mm -hmm. of you guys breaking in. Yeah, I know that. I know that. But that's uh, we don't have we don't have a choice, you know. Violence as as comes as from know. they are not treating very well. The reason why it's because coming is violence. Okay. If they are treating these old people as human beings, they never they never do anything. But we don't have shelter. We don't have anything which is very necessary for human beings. Even some people they cannot feed themselves. They don't have money. And what can they do? Sometimes when they open the truck, they get something, fruit like that, maybe they eat. Because they are hungry. They are not treating like human beings. We are trying to escape from dictatorship of African country. And when we reach here in Europe, the same thing. Day three of trucker life, and it's time for Ewan to return to the UK. That means back through Calais port. He stops the truck for a thorough check first, though. And this is what people can cut open? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't recommend it because it's not totally solid, but people would crawl maybe halfway down on their hands and knees and maybe cut, because it's too obvious to see here. They would go halfway down and cut their way in. You need to come in here. Ewan shows me where he once found someone curled up underneath. It's an insane place to try and entry into the UK. But this must show you, this the must illustrate perfectly the desperation. Yeah, absolute, absolute desperation, yes. Is there any part of you that thinks, that's quite impressive actually, that someone would go to that length just to find safety? Yeah, it, it is, it's fairly impressive. We're sitting here today on a nice sunny, uh, nice sunny, dry, slightly breezy day. The truck would be doing 56 miles an hour, you'd get a good wind through here. But on, on a wet day, you would I would imagine you've got to be, it's, it's got to be like through a car wash. It's, I, I suspect you'd be close to drowning in here on a very wet day because you've got the six wheels and the spray. Have you ever found this not intact? Yes. I opened the door with an assistance of a, another driver and I had uh, six adults and one baby in the back of the trailer. So I did, and we had to ask them to get out. It was bizarre because I'm a dad, I've got two kids, a five-year-old and a three-year-old, and I was, I was shocked to see her getting out, and I, I, I had to get them out because 
bottom line was I had seven immigrants in the back of the trailer and I was sympathetic, but not to the extent I was willing to pay £14,000 to bring them into the UK. Where so were they from? I didn't ask. I didn't ask. Did you think about them? Did you think about why they were in there, where they'd come from? I just made sure they got out safely and checked the inside of the trailer. Do you know what would happen to them? No idea. Sometimes wondered what did happen to them. Did they ever make it to the UK? Yeah, I felt really sorry for them because they said they had nothing. She had nothing at all? Nothing at all, just the child and her two, and two power arms, no bags, no packages, no nothing. The, the two Wabberers trucks here, the Hungarians, the guys at the back are trying to break in. Somebody has been in and the police and the police have got them out. And look at the back of the one there, they're around the back of the, the, the yellow truck in the corner down there and runs, runs the police away around to get them out of it as well. Where are we going in? We're going into the heartbeat monitor. Right now to put the monitors on the side of the trailer to make sure there's nobody inside. We'll have to get out, otherwise we'll interfere with the reading. How do people get through undetected then? Because you don't, sometimes they're closed, sometimes the x-ray machine's switched off, sometimes you're not put through them, you're bypassed around them and it's like a lottery I suppose whether they get through or whether they get don't. What would you say to the government ministers who are looking at this problem? Do you think they understand? It's getting very serious and somebody is going to get seriously hurt someday trying to keep them off their vehicles. I would, I would challenge the immigration minister to come and sit in my truck where you guys sat and witness what we have witnessed this past couple of days and then would love to hear his views on the matter and his solution to the problem. We have to be lucky every, t every time to keep the immigrants out of the trucks and they only have to be lucky once to make it to the UK. 